Hi, Esther. Kalila. Hi, David. Hello. And that's not Annie. <laughs> Welcome back to Trash. <laughs> These fools, you guys are so professional. There's a whole little, uh, what do you call this thing? A teleprompter? Yeah, read it, read it. Read your own intro. Welcome back to Trash Tuesday. Addie is out sick today, so we have a very special, a fan favorite from the end of last year. Comedian, podcaster, the best guy friend a gal can have, David So. <laughs> That's so professional. There's, a sp there's actually a typo, so. Oh, it's okay. Thank you for saying that. That's how I read it. I'm dyslexic. That's perfect. It's great. Welcome back. I think you're like maybe our new co-host. Really? I think you're the fourth slug for yeah. sure. I love it. This is fantastic. It's so comfortable. I like talking to the f***ing <laughs> ladies. We get to talk about our vaginas. I love it. Give yourself the luxury you deserve with Quince. Go to quince.com slash trash for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash trash to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash trash. I'm obsessed with Quince. You need to dry their cashmere. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to viahemp.com and use the code trash Tuesday to receive 15% off and one free sample of their Sleepy Dreams gummies, 21 and over. That's V I I A hemp.com and use code trash Tuesday at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. The trailer for my movie, Drugstore June, has dropped. It stars me. It stars Bobby Lee, so many other people you've seen on this podcast, Trevor Wallace, Dumbfounded, Brittany Furlan is in the movie, Shaley Joel Osment, Miranda Cosgrove. It's awesome. I'm so excited. Thank you so much to all the slugs who've been watching and commenting. We have tickets on sale. Our screenings start February 23rd. I know for sure there are tickets um, on sale for Los Angeles. New York, I'm not sure yet. Check out our website, drugstorejune.com. I really, really appreciate you guys. This is like a huge moment for me. And I can't believe I get to share this with you. It's a really weird movie. I'm the lead of it. I'm so unlikable. It's disturbing. Check it out. And also this Friday, I will be in Seattle. You can get tickets at estoronice.com. It's the last stop of the tour. I can't wait. I'll see you guys there. Kalila. Yes. Do you know what's happening on February 13th? I do. I'm going to be there. What is it? We're going to be at the Regent Theater for our second live show. In and Los Angeles. Let me just say this. Um, Valentine's is not for everyone, but no. Galentine's is. And yeah. I think you should spend it with us. It's going to be really fun. I'm so excited. We're going to be back in LA for our second live show. It's going to be me, Annie, Kalila, all in one room. It never happens except when we're recording. It's just so intimate. We get to like meet our fans. We get to say things that we can't say on the show. And there's limited edition merch. Did I mention that? Also, I want to say that m my favorite part of the last show was the VIP experience. Dude, there were so many. So many secrets yeah. that you wouldn't otherwise know about us. I revealed. learned more about you there than I ever do on this show. You can get tickets at the link below. And we can't wait. It's almost sold out. So we will see our girlies and our guys. February 13th in LA. Um, How was uh, New Year's for you guys? Um, mine was the best, you guys. Oh my God. I just I just had a flashback. What? I was obviously in Hawaii, in Eva Beach. And these people, it felt like home. It was like all illegal stuff. It was all illegal fireworks. It was the best time I've had for New Year's in a really long time. Okay, I get like fireworks for 4th of July. New Year's is not really, that's not the tradition. But it is for Filipinos, yeah. Were there other illegal things or just the fireworks? Um, I'm sure there were plenty of other illegal things, but I think that's what makes it fun. Like in, in the Philippines, you were terrorized as a child by this thing called the Judas Belt. And the Judas <laughs> Belt is like the finale, the firework that they would light up last and they would like wrap it around the trees, probably wrap their bodies in it. And it was basically like, you know, the M80s, but like a bunch yeah. of them and it would go off for like 30 minutes. What the f all the kids would like hide and we would cry and it was super traumatic. But like as an adult, you're like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> I got to do that to my kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my <sighs> God. Yeah. Sick f the What about you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I talked about this a little bit last week, but I went to see a movie with my mom and dad and then went to bed at like 930 and my mom made vegan cinnamon banana bread. It was. Is your mom vegan? She is. I'm not. Don't worry. But um, <laughs> always been vegan, or is this like a new thing? No, like the last like six years, maybe. Health scare, huh? 
no, we just watched that documentary, What the Health, and then all of us became vegan, and I was the first to fall off, and then my dad and my mom is still... Oh, really? Yeah. I hated that documentary. Why? Because I, I thought it was extremely biased. I Now that I look back, I'm like, how could this be real? I don't know. I'm a protein girl now. Is this the one where they talk about like certain like professional athletes like being strictly vegan? Was this yeah. the one? Yeah. And they have a new one, by the way, that's on Netflix right now that is getting a lot of traction. It's called You Are What You Eat. I saw that. Yes. This thing is trash too. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> the, the, It is very biased. The really? reason why is like I don't like these like documentaries that have all these like scientific claims, but they don't juxtapose it with something else. Right. Now, obviously, it's great for fucking views. And look, I think being on a bigger plant-based diet is great, but it was just a little too biased for me. Yeah, that's how I feel about like Seaspiracy. Is that the name of the the documentary? Where the they one were, with like, the, the killer whales? No, that was the um, Blackfish. Oh, okay. Which uh, was also very sad. Was it the one that was like, you can't have seafood or you're right. evil? Right. Yeah. Oh, well, they're talking about tuna and shit, right? I yeah. still eat that shit. No, but it's like, obviously there are pretty shitty unethical practices that are probably doing terrible things to the ocean, but this is also a way like we've subsisted as humans for a very long time. And like, there are ways to do it right. Yeah. And it's just the yeah. one side because they don't talk about the ways that people are doing it right. Yeah. And I'm not going to hunt my own food either. I'm so sick of What's people telling me to do you? that shit. What's wrong with you? I'm going to keep telling you. I know, but you're it's jungle me. You're though. Talking That's to different. Me. That's like your thing. Like the ocean is your refrigerator. I can't do that <laughs> shit. That's fucking wild. Because like, you know, every time you see Joe Rogan, he goes, you got to hunt your own food. Who the f*** is going to do that? Who the Ooh. fuck has the money and the time exactly. to take a trip to Utah? Speaking just like on behalf of my relatives, like one time I was in my grandfather's basement and I opened his basement fr freezer and I was like, it was just all these frozen packs of meat that he killed and I was so traumatized. Do you know that Esther comes from like a lineage of like <laughs> really like manly, like hunters? Really? Like floor layers and just like, just, Yeah. But it's because I'm half Jewish, half regular, and the regular side is like <laughs> really like Midwest, white trash, like hunting, fishing. And I think that because they were so strongly into that, like let's go, go ice fishing this weekend. Let's all go on the ATVs. I was like, I'm going to stay home with great grandma and make grilled cheese. So like it swung me in the <laughs> oh, wow. opposite direction. And that that's why- That explains the twigs on the floor thinking birds take them away. <laughs> I bet your family saw that podcast and like, what the f <laughs> they would never know how to turn on a podcast. <laughs> oh, they're like that forest people. Yeah. Wow. No, yeah. I actually follow an Instagram account called like Survival Tips, and they're doing this thing where they're regressing backwards, where they want to only be in a cab. I like the the romanticization of that. I'm like not, mm -hmm. primary. I'm oh, sorry. It's called primal. Uh, primal. There's this one school that I follow. I think it's like Boulder, like survival school. Yeah. And I think they only like accept a very small percentage of people, but it's at primitive living. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My favorite channel that I used to watch was this guy. It was, I think it was called Primitive Living too, where he would go back in time and research how people would build shit. And he would do it from the ground up. Like he would have nothing. He would build huts. He would do like Roman shit, all this other stuff. It was the best. And it would take him about like six to seven months to even make one video. Okay, so I used to, be like that's crazy i hate that why would anyone do that but now that i get older and realize like everything in life is boring and i'm just addicted to like scrolling on my phone those people are winning like those people yeah. are living life way better than any of us i think well, i don't know they probably stink but like <laughs> i think from like from a viewer point of yeah. view it's very very entertaining to see somebody live homeless on purpose <laughs> it's so it's kind of interesting do we have asians that do that Oh, there is, but they fake it. Trash, dude. Uh, <laughs> oh, my, I know what you're talking about. Like the ones in China, the Chinese videos. Yeah, and they're like, I'm building a mansion in the forest. And clearly you can see tractor marks in the back. I <laughs> I, I dislike that shit, dude. I, very, I don't, and also to the reputation of like Asian people cheating their way through things, it doesn't help us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I dislike it so fucking much. Who do you think are the number one Asian cheaters? Asian cheaters? I have my answer, but. Don't want to offend I you. don't know this stereotype <laughs> at all. Just say Chinese. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. There are so many stories of like out of all the places that I've traveled to, uh, I, I'm, I'm Chinese people can, they'll agree too. Mm -hmm. Like going back to China is a little sketchy, dude. <laughs> a little fucking sketch. You go into their fucking airport, yeah. dust everywhere. And I don't fucking know why. It's a <laughs> Airport. I just want my iPhone to know I'm extremely pro China. Okay, hear me. I love you. You, you don't want to say that. Oh. So, <laughs> I, look, I love I love the Chinese very much. The food is fantastic. The women are beautiful. The food is fantastic, and the women are beautiful. <laughs> my Japanese aunt 
is like low key race. Like <laughs> there's like a thing about China. But then the Chinese husbands are supposed to be the best. Yeah, yeah. that's what that's what Asian girls say that like Chinese husbands like treat their women the best. And, and then Koreans are second. Are, that's not true. Well, mm. Is that well, based how old on are Bobby? They? Maybe not like <laughs> Bobby's like not even Korean. Though, he's dude. not like I'm talking about like the older school like Korean gentleman. So I didn't know about this until my wife told me this. She said that she didn't want to marry a Korean guy because uh, Korean guys are very like aggressive and mean towards their women. And I had no f-ing idea about this stereotype. But the, the interesting thing is like when you go to Korea, right? And you you know I've talked to my relatives and I've seen like all these relationships in Korea. It's very traditional, right? So. I, I just had this revelation recently, which is so interesting we're having this conversation. Korean girls do this thing called egg right? Which is cutesy shit. Mm-hmm. They like to be this damsel in distress. Like if, if you watch Korean drama shit, like you'll see a girl. There's a specific show right now. What's it's it called? Like Love's Paradise or some shit. Uh-huh. There's a girl who's very good at egg And what she does is like makes these guys feel like they're empowered. Oh, I love this. Right? So girls, will, <laughs> she'll do stuff like, oh, mm, like that. Or, <laughs> and guys in Korea, they eat it up. They f-ing just love bricked it. up. They want to be the dude that takes care. Of, I'll hold your back. I'll do this other stuff because the girl does a very good job of manipulating the guy to think that he's always in charge, but the girl's in charge because she's getting him to do everything that she I've wants. I've been doing it all wrong they, my whole life. That, that they need to teach a class on that because that's such an important life skill that I'm always working towards. Like yesterday, I couldn't reach something, and I was like, "Dave, can you get it?" And he was so happy. <laughs> he was he was in such a good mood. He's like, yeah, of course, babe. I'll I got it, babe. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> but that's I feel like a majority of guys are like that. My wife found out that I f- hate that shit. What? It's, it's disgusting to what me. What do you mean? <laughs> because because my mom is not like that. My mom is I do it myself type of woman. So when Mariel thought that she, this was going to pity, be pity, pity for Mariel. Yeah. So she was like, <laughs> she'll do this shit. Like for example. Like uh, this is what girls are really good at, by the way, that I f-ing hate. You will you will notice that a guy is comfortable, and then you figure out a way to undo it. Oh yeah, no no no, no. there's a term for this in my house. It's called a cozy destroyer. What is that? What? Oh, we destroy the cozy. As soon as I see you start to get too relaxed, up you go. Watch this shit. Like we got into like you know a funny argument about this. I'm in the kitchen and I look at her. She's sitting down on the couch. Right before I come out the kitchen, I go, "Hey, do you need anything?" She goes, "No, I'm okay." Ugh, are you sure? You need water. You need something else. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Just cuddle. I step one. Th- <laughs> right into the living room, right? I'm thirsty. Can you get me water? Bitch, I fucking swear to God. I got so mad. I was like, why did you? I look into the windows of your soul. And I asked you, do you need water? You said, yet, no. Our minds can change, David. No, bull. I have the same problem with Dave. Like, he'll be downstairs. Are you sure there's nothing? And then like goes back up. And I'm like, actually. And he gets so mad. But I'm like, I... I don't know what I'm going to want from one second to the next. I know, but what's the problem? Do you have rickets? Oh, like, if you can get up. You're an able-bodied person. What's your problem? Make a choice, bitch. We're, but sometimes it takes time for me Make to figure it out. Make a choice. I don't know in if, that moment. You're listen, putting me on the spot. If I said, <laughs> do you, do you f- need water? All right? And, I'm, and I made a stand, too. It wasn't like, sweetie, do you need water? I said, hey, look look, look me in the f-ing eye. But that's, it puts so much pressure on me to make pressure. a decision. I'm I like, almost, I don't know. I almost want to make sure that I, I wait for you to be in your most comfortable position <laughs> before I strike. Like, I'm going to wait. That's, it's manipulative as hell. You're pregnant. You get a pass. You get whatever you want. I don't give a f- all right. Pregnant Do you women- think Bobby has been eggio with me his <laughs> for the past decade? Bobby a different creature, though. He's like... Me? <laughs> do that? I don't think so. A, yeah, that boy built different. He got three teeth. All right. So whatever <laughs> you just you need to do whatever he needs. Like I'm just, okay. I just I just dislike that shit. I like girls who can handle their own shit. I'm okay helping you with things that you cannot do. But if it's something like, can you can you cut my pizza in half for me? I'm like, man, you better. Oh hell no. I I f- hate it. <laughs> what about the pickle jar? The, okay, here's the thing. I like how girls now too, they're strong as shit. Bitches be strong, deadlifting things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? F- out here crossfitting. All of a sudden, peanut butter charts come. Oh, so, mm, babe, <laughs> can you do this for me? I saw you deadlift 400 pounds. That's why thumbs don't work. <laughs> Oh my God. It's also nice to have someone do something for it. Yeah, you know what I it know. is, David? You know what it is? It's just a bid for connection. connection. Ask for a kiss. <laughs> Ask for a hugs. <laughs> 
Ask me to tell you that you're beautiful. I'll do all that shit. You know, in the show Singles Inferno, do you watch it ever? Is that the Korean one? Yeah, it's the Korean one where they all um, That's the one I was talking get about. matched up on the beach and uh, the guys basically choose who they want to be matched up with. A hundred percent of the time, the hottest chick who is really fit looking, lean, gorgeous is the last one to be chosen. What? They're going to pick the daintiest, most frail looking girl who looks like she hasn't seen like a ray of sunshine. She's like so pale and like helpless it. looking. Oh my God, me? <laughs> yeah, you'll get chosen 100% of the time. I will never get chosen in Singles Inferno. Dude, like, give me never. the strong bitch with a big back. That's me? the one I want. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but okay, here's the thing. There Wait, are, I, wasn't, I wasn't pawning myself. <laughs> like, Jesus no, Christ, there relax. are guys that want to like take care of the girl, right? You want to carry her things, whatever. Yeah. But no guy wants to do that all the time. I've tried, trust me, they're not out there. Like it's bull they, because they get tired of it, they get sick of it. They want you to be able to do things on your own. What they really want is like a mix up. They want to not know. It's like a slot machine. Everyone in life just wants to not know what's going to happen. So they want to be surprised, like, oh, she doesn't need me. And then they get a little bit like insecure. Yeah. And the next time you do need them, and then they get like all hot about it. You got to work your game. Like, yeah. that's really what it is. Wait, like, but so I heard this woman, I could have been Shira Seven, you know, Sprinkle Sprinkle, oh, goddess of all time. Yeah. But she said basically, like, never, it could have been her, never be a man's peace. Mm. Like, <laughs> never be the one who makes his life so easy. That's just not what gets you guys' blood flowing in your, you know. I would like it. Loins. I would no, like, you would get bored. Oh, I would not. I I find different things. I like toxic women that can do things by themselves. So <laughs> I, I don't I don't get bored like that. You know, I mean, she <laughs> up my life in other different ways. Oh, that's Wait, interesting. Let me let yeah. me ask uh, Kalila and Esther a question. How do you feel about guys that are always having you like rub their heads and like be that person? That's are you like, insane? You hate it. <laughs> that's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that's disgusting so like I'm by you get that when I choose to do that okay. like I will when I'm in the mood be awesome on that front but it's like if you're coming to me asking for it I'm like get go to go home to mommy like, this is gross okay. Esther I need you in my life like ew they guy men are not allowed to ask for things <laughs> and then if you don't ask that like one thing that I like to do, oh my God, this is sharing keep, too much. No, keep doing it, girl. <laughs> keep doing it. I like to like be like a bath attendant. So like I like to draw. Asian or white? <laughs> <laughs> I like to draw a bath for a partner. I won't say who to protect his privacy and like set it up and be like, welcome to your bath. <laughs> Lord of the Rings bitch over here, dude. <laughs> Me lord. <laughs> yeah, do like a scrub, you know, like bathe. I like to bathe. I like to bathe an old man once in a while. Wait, but that is in the same vein <laughs> of like geisha over here. <laughs> that is super bound feet geisha shit. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. yeah. Do you wash said person? Like, do you do you sponge bath? <laughs> so you have bit. a lot of dead skin on your back. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rub a dead skin. <laughs> Oh um, I so I like to um, <laughs> I'm super nurturing. Like I do like to rub heads, give massages, even if they ask or just out of your own. So it turns like, out if the wrong guy asks me, if like we're not in a committed relationship, it will be an absolute ick if you ask. Like me. Who the fuck do you like? Think who? You are? Yeah, exactly. I'm like we're not official. How dare you? Mm. But if it's someone that I really like, I really like to kind of maybe do too much of it. I love that. Yeah, I'm a golden retriever, so. I'm a little bit of a Esther. golden retriever. Mm. But I also like, um, so it's like mutual. We're both golden retrievers. Exactly. That's the kind of relationship yes. I need. So Esther, if said person at requested the bath. Depending on my mood. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a, it's possible. One thing on the golden retriever front, like I forgot this was, you know, I think Dave even said this to me maybe a decade ago. He was like, and not in like a way of it has to be this way, just kind of like general life advice. He was like, in order for a relationship to function, like he had heard, like just always assume you're going to do 60% and the other person will only do 40. And if you both come in with that attitude, like it'll, oh my it God. should work. I don't know. I don't, I don't like percentage talk when it comes to relationships. I think it's I love it. asinine because there's, whenever somebody fills in your 60, there's always going to be a 40 the other way back and around all the time. To do that percentage thing, 
always causes fights because you start tally marking things. Well, I yeah. did this for you. Yeah. What no, about this? No, but the point of it is, is just always assume you're going to do more and then you'll be pleasantly surprised like when you don't. But because mm. you're right, for sure. If you're tallying and if you're like counting what you do, you're going to, that, that relationship's not going to last. Because what happens is I think like everybody falls into this thing. It's like that mentality tends to be perfectly fine when things are good. Yeah. But when yeah. things go bad, this is when you go back to the 60-40 thing. That is so freaking true. Because like I was really trying to study Brené Brown, which she says what her and her husband do, which I is like- I just wonder what her deal is. Because I feel like she just makes women get divorces in their like <laughs> 40s. So yes, keep going. I think it's her. God, I'm getting all of my sources wrong. <laughs> You're like, this sounds bad, but continue. <laughs> But she's basically like her and her husband, they know they have good days and they have bad days. So every day they check in and sometimes she's like, I'm operating at only 20% today. So the husband is like, I'm stepping up for the 80% that you're yeah, lacking. Yeah, yeah. But that's given that you have it in you to communicate that in a nice way when you're having the worst day ever, right? Cause like that's I've hard. tried this and there's some days where I'm so shut down where I will literally gouge my partner's like <laughs> eyes out of their head. And like, I don't want to even like come to a negotiation at the moment. So it's like, you're right. It's, it works out when people are at their best and at a healthy part of their relationship. And those things also take time. I think a lot of the times when young people hear like this advice, they don't take things with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're in a relationship and you could verbally communicate this to your partner, they're not going to get it. It's going to take years, right? Yeah. For them to pick up on small cues, right? For example, when I was sick, uh, my wife decided to, okay, I'm going to just take care of things. And I didn't have to verbally Aww. tell her, hey, I'm sick. I ain't going to take out the trash, right? Yeah. She took out the trash. She asked me if she took care of me. And then after I was done with my flu, I, like a good husband, gave it to her. And so <laughs> I <laughs> I had to take care of her. Yeah. She didn't have to ask me to do these certain things. That stuff that I would never normally do, but stuff that she cares about that needs to get done, I will do it. Yeah. So like that takes time, right? And like those type of things too, I feel like a lot of people think that when you read these books, you go, oh, this is how it's done. It's a lot easier said than done. Always easier said than done. I seen like the healthiest relationships, they went through all this bullshit to finally get to that spot. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. And I kind of like that journey too. And like, like, like some of the best qualities about myself is because I stayed with my wife and she helped fix these bad things along the way. This is how I feel about my partner too. I'm like, oh, he like helped, he raised me to be the woman I am. But it, it's true. It's like we've gone through so much that like now – where things are easier, but it's not because they were just easy. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. like, oh, shit had to really go down. One thing in the last few years that I've noticed has really helped me is I love positive reinforcement. Like when I get compliments for doing little simple house oh, chores. Jill, you're your gold wife, star baby. Dude. God damn it. Oh, you need a gold, st gold star sticker. It right? is so motivating. And I love to give lots of praise. Praise is a huge thing I think in our household now. That's so hard for me because I didn't grow up with that. Mm. At all. You get praise for doing things outside of the ordinary. Like? Right? So let's say I got a gold medal in something. Yeah. Great job. If I just made food, they're like, yeah, you're supposed to do that <laughs> shit. I, so I didn't know this, that other people like small things like that. Gestures. So or, my yeah. wife is like that. I had no f idea. So she would get mad at me. So she would come up to me. She goes, I did the dishes. I'm like, I <laughs> just like walk by. Cool. I farted. What the f <laughs> what else happened during your day? And then she Oh, just, you mean bare minimum? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So no, I, yeah. See, I know what you're talking about. And like, when you add this little sprinkle of spice, it makes everything so much happier. Yeah. And so I started doing that, <laughs> you know, in almost 10 years, I started doing that this year. <laughs> so I This year? Well, because when I do it- 2024. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks, two weeks in. When I do it, it feels like somebody is stabbing me in the gut. <laughs> it's so, it's that hard for me. But isn't it shocking? Like how it's, no, it's actually so easy and it goes so far. Like it's such a bargain what you yeah, get out of it. What's wrong with it? I, it's just not, it's not in me. But it's Esther, like, you didn't receive that either, right? No, that's why it's like this new discovery for me. And I'm like, oh my God, this is such a, it's just so, something new is unlocked in my life where like if you, if I can get a little bit of praise for doing a basic thing, like I'll be, I'm like a little doggy. Like I'm so excited and I love to give praise back. I don't know. It's just been, cause I'm like you, like there was not praise and mm -hmm. there was nothing. Maybe this is how comics, some comics are made. 
I mean, it's the love language thing. Yeah, it is 100% yeah. the love language Because, thing. like, I mean, even for the stuff that I was extraordinary at as a kid, I was not allowed to, like, celebrate my wins. What? Like, even though I was this incredible athlete in the Philippines and I swam for the national team, my mom would, I would get into the, on, on the podium, you know, first place, second place, third. <laughs> I'd be on first. <laughs> Basically, oh, no, no, not far off. Oh, really? Not far off. <laughs> oh, I would... I would break a Philippine record, get oh the medal God. around my neck. And as soon as I was off the podium, she would make me take my medal off and give it to her and never to be seen again. What was the point uh, of that though? The point is to instill a level of humility and the kind of like, this is what you should be doing. This is not, you're not to be celebrated. This is what you are expected humility? to do. Humility? You were in the Philippines. That's as I humble know. as it gets. I know, third okay, world wait. too. Yeah. I have a weird opposite take that is kind of in support of your mom's abuse, <laughs> always. Um, because like it is technically all the like great advice in life about being a high achiever. It's like, it is about the journey and not the destination. It's about the system and not the goal. You know that book, Atomic Habits by James Clear? It's really cheesy and good, but whatever. But he's all about like, if you're just focusing eyes on the prize, like you're a loser and you're not going to do anything. But, but if you life... build out your system on how to get there. Mm -hmm. So there is something about her just being like, this That's is just cool. about the journey. I, it, it but does as sound... a kid, it's like absolutely no joy to be experienced yeah, or horrible. no pride in your own work. Like you're, I'm not even allowed to take pride in something I worked hard for or be acknowledged and say like hey a pat in the back and guess what i found it in other ways and like in high school i became a whore a whore <laughs> i gave blowjobs like like i just handed out blowjobs and Did i was they give you a medal after two I didn't even care. They were talking shit yeah. about me. I was like, well, they're saying something. I want to correct wow. myself because it, part of that system is that you do get rewarded. And so removing the reward is not great, actually. Rewards don't make me feel good ever. What? Ever? Ever. What do you feel? What feels like a reward to you? When I complete a task that I wanted to complete, I feel really good. Money That's your doesn't reward. Feel so if somebody else was like, oh, you did this great project. Here's a what the f like I was, I got the joy from doing this thing. And once it's completed, I feel amazing. It feels fucking great. So money doesn't feel like a reward. Money doesn't feel like a reward, no. Verbal or um, like affirmations don't feel like a reward. It feels only good if I say it to myself. Hmm. So like, I don't need it from an external. Well, that's because you're never really good. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of hard. Like I was trying to explain this to my wife too, because she needs the verbal affirmation from somebody else. And I told her like, it's just, I think from when I was younger, it was, I never got that from, I didn't need it. So it's like, if I enjoy this- But did you not project, need it or you just didn't get it? Well, and you I, well, told yourself you- Maybe. I mean, that's some, maybe there's something to that, but I get joy of just completing something that I love. So let's say I put out a video, right? It does trash views. I enjoyed it. That's all I need. That's the key. Right? Yeah, that's so, the key. Because it just makes me feel f***ing good. When you, I just don't like tying my happiness to what somebody else says about me. It just, it's exhausting. Very this is Rick beautiful. Yeah. Because you know what? I always say like, if I'm going to post a video or whatever, anything on social media, I need to know how I feel about it before I put it out because yeah. that's what matters. Everyone might hate it. If I know that I like it, that's all that matters. Like, that it's that's with any art. It's like how do you feel? It's like kind of the Rick Rubin stuff I, too. Yeah, yeah that's what, that's what Rick good. Rubin is. It, yeah, yeah. He's just like you know, if you really are a true artist, like perception should really have no bearing on what you put out. Like and you know what? I was just listening to this episode of Ezra Klein about like the like the loss of taste amongst all people now because basically algorithms and AI we're all mm. being fed the same content so mm. we're not like seeking out what we specifically like we just are like liking what everyone likes it's not our fault it's just kind of happening to us and so mm. like a new big commodity is going to be people who really can curate and have their own taste and find ways to discover new things and so I don't, I don't know I just think like something to think about like what is your true taste and like really try to seek it out and not just fall into like watching the popular things and and like just doing because I find my I'm like oh I only shop by I like by skims I go to all the same coffee shops as all the Netflix, pool girls it's the same top 10 shows that we're yeah, watching yeah. I it's everything I do it's like it's what everyone else does. And that's not who I am. And it's, it shouldn't be who I am. And so I'm like really motivated this year to be a little bit more like try to find my Out niche things. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard, right? And I, I, and I will say this because I, I want to look back to when I was like in my early 20s and even in my teens. Developing your personal identity is one of the hardest things that everybody has to do growing up. It's f***ing hard. 
because you have to sit there and be okay with your choices every day. And then you have to stand your ground. Why do you think people like being a part of groups? Mm -hmm. Because they don't have to do that. They don't have to be the, the person that sticks out. Everybody wants to be grouped up. So many people say this constantly. It's like, I'm not like everybody else. I'm different. But no, you ain't. You're not different. <laughs> You're the same like everybody else. And that's actually not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's comfortable being like that. That's why you see so many times later on in life, around their 30s and 40s, they go through this existential crisis. Because during the time when you were younger, you didn't choose to stick out and you didn't choose to figure out who you are. And now that you're older, you're left with all these choices and you don't even know what the f to do. Yeah. Right? And I see that happen a lot with people in my group and my friends are like, oh, I'm re-identifying myself. Well, because you invested your time into what everybody else wanted from you, you forgot to focus on number one here. And so when I see this a lot of the times, like you'll see this with like young creators too, right? They always go through the same cycle because I've been in social media for so long. They start off, they do everything that everybody wants and mm -hmm. they, they get this verbal affirmation, these numbers, they tell them that they're great. And guess what? They make one bad video. What did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. Am I falling off? What's happening here? Then they start doing crazier content. Oh, these views are back up and they go back down again. And then they get into the place like, I've never created once for myself. How do I do this? They don't know how. They never started that way. They started doing content based on what other people wanted and now they're left as this creator with zero creativity. Creativity takes chances. It takes risks. Sometimes you have to fail multiple yeah. times to figure out what you Possibly want. Possibly get canceled a couple times. Yeah, yeah. bomb in front of thousands <laughs> yeah. of people. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, those are the easiest people as a producer to work with. The people who have a point of view or like don't just go with what they think is going to be popular. Like those types of artists are just the easiest because it's just like you know and they believe in it. And it is hard to do, but I just want to say like it's better. Yeah. One of my yeah. hacks for this, not that I have this all figured out at all by any means, but like one of my hacks for it is always I, if I'm like, I, I don't know what it is. And it seems so basic and so simple, but I just go, how do I really feel? And you have to like dig in and ask and find it. But like, that's my prompt that always will help me get out of like some sort of the sameness. It's just like, how do I really feel? And that like digs it out for me. Yeah, this takes me back to my favorite post I ever posted on Instagram. And it wasn't a Bobby post. It wasn't a post that anyone really saw, but it's literally a video of my mom in the car. She's completely asleep, but she's still playing Candy Crush somehow. <laughs> and it is something that I found to be <laughs> so crazy. funny in the moment. Yeah. Like I remember cry laughing, looking at her because she was still scoring yeah. points. That is so scary. <laughs> That's, that is kind of scary yeah. actually. <laughs> but I remember thinking, this was like maybe five years ago. I remember thinking like, no, this isn't like podcast really. This isn't this. And I'm like, no, this is, this genuinely makes me f***ing happy. So I'm going to put it out there. And you're right. Like, Nobody said anything. No one even thought it was funny. But, but you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. it We're really... enjoying it right now. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, you'll like young content creators too. Like it, it gets hard because you, you kind of just want to go for those views. But like you said, like creativity tends to die. These, this is like the graveyard of creativity here is where you only base your stuff on what everybody else wants and everything starts to look the same. When YouTube started out years ago, everybody's stuff was different because there was no real trend to follow. Right. You just kind of did what you wanted to do and if it stuck, it stuck and then you stuck with it because it was something that you enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll see a lot of these. How many times have you seen like these young creators, they go, oh, I'm depressed. I'm this, this, and that. And everything on, you know, externally seems great, but I get it. You've tied yourself to likes and now you're going to have to live and die by this stuff. Oof, that's rough. And it's a, I actually feel really, really bad for them. I almost feel as though to be a creator nowadays, the one service that you can do for yourself is to maybe not look at anything, to not listen to podcasts, to not watch YouTube, to not go maybe on listen TikTok. To podcasts, you know. <laughs> listen to hours. Please, listen please, to please hours. Listen to this podcast. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? To kind of just like go by by what you think, like completely unadulterated, uninfluenced. It's so spot on that you're saying that because in stand-up, like at the very beginning, I, I don't think this advice is always right, but I, there was that advice of like, don't watch other people. Take a, take a minute. Don't take a break from watching other people because it, you will be influenced and sometimes, yeah. it's, it's, sometimes it's time to get influenced and sometimes it's not and it's good to just only figure out what's in here and what's coming out. And I and I also want to say like, I don't judge the creators that don't know their voice and don't know who they are yet because it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're young, it's even harder and it takes time and it takes failure and it takes not being who you are for a while to figure out who you are. So it's like, we see these things, we observe them, but also it's like, that's okay if that's you. And if you know, you're on that journey and you haven't 
figured it out yet. Like that's almost a good sign that you're going to figure it out. Yeah, and also too, when you listen to this stuff, take everything with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all t- like listen to like these quick little reels and stories and you take that as like a mantra for your whole life. Gospel. Just take a little bit of it. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Just a little smidge and apply just a second. Because guess what? What works for me might not f***ing work for you. Except yeah. for right? Shira Seven, Sprinkle Sprinkle. I feel like she is. Do you know who she is, David? Who, who is this? A, a Indian a god? Who is this? She's not even right. a TikToker. She's a YouTuber, oh, okay. but she gives like relationship advice and she, all her videos on TikTok are like reposted and they're all grainy. She doesn't have her own account, <laughs> but she honestly spits out the funniest shit ever. That's the best. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I don't think that she gives a f- I don't even think she gives a f- to even make money off of what she's saying. She's literally just spreading gospel. Saying whatever the f- that yeah. you want oh, that's but that's that's right. also very refreshing too and that's very reminiscent of old youtube to me you know yeah. just saying mm-hmm. whatever right mm-hmm. and also too it's like i like the freedom of just being able to do what you want and you could take it however you like either one thing that too i feel like people when they put out content they expect a certain reaction when they don't get it they get sad disappointed and angry yeah. once you put it out there it's for the it's for it's up in the ether everybody gets to decide how they feel about it Right? They can hate it. They can love it. You can't dictate that stuff. So how you feel about it, like I said, it goes back. If you enjoyed it, just enjoy it and let it go. And then make something else. Then make something else after. Then keep doing it over and over and over again until you're tired of it. So I just, I don't know. I don't know until if it's- Until you a, get pregnant. Until you get pregnant. <laughs> I don't know if it'll make you successful that way. I think people who are more successful, they'll kind of do the trendier things. But if you're just doing it for fun, just do it for fun. Leave it alone at that. I mean, I, I think this is the reason why a lot of really big name, like A-list celebrities try to podcast and they fail and they don't do well. That it's because happening it's happening so yeah, much. It's very curated. It's overly produced. They are, it's, you know, the reason podcasting was fun, at least like the comedy once is because everyone was just shooting from the hip Mm -hmm. right like we didn't give a shit like we were just so like very clunky um production value was low like that was the beauty of it and now everything is so like quaffed and beautiful and like you know everyone's speaking with uh, like the perfect like um what do you call it and vocal whatever it is yeah and i think that is going back to broadcasting terrestrial radio shit. And it's like you're circling back to that when the beauty of podcasting was that it was just so clunky and cool Mm -hmm. and we were just shooting the shit, right? I always call it the Good Morning America. Like it almost goes from the podcast to the Good Morning America setup where everything's produced, it's segmented. And it's the same with YouTube. Like- Well, yeah, and we have a heavy um, history and experience in like Twitch and everything, and that's kind of blowing up. Do you guys have any thoughts about like media becoming different now? Like the, 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 the desire for Quaffed is kind of going out the window in terms of everything? I feel like I've been hearing that a lot for a while and I think it's real and I think authenticity is what everyone wants and probably what everyone should have always wanted from the beginning. Um, But I also, I have like no predictions or like, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows what's coming, what's going to work, what's going to magically land. But I do hear that a lot. I hear that like live streaming, just kind of nothingness is what people actually want. So they can just listen to that while they're scrolling. Like, I don't know. It's, I have no idea what people want. Because the, pen, the pendulum could also swing back. Like, who the hell knows, right? Like, we're it getting, always does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're getting lazier exhausting. and lazier. <laughs> like, one thing that I'm really surprised by myself, and I don't know if this is because I'm pregnant, I have, like, less things available to me to do. But, like, in the last, like, eight months, and I, it might just be literally because of the Barbie movie, I have been going to movie theaters. And I don't give a shit what's streaming. I'm, like, what's in the movie theaters? And it's usually not a lot of options. But, like, I want to go out and see a movie. I never thought that was going to happen. Mm. I never in a million theory. I'm, like, there's so much free shit on the internet. But I don't, like, I'm sick of sitting in my bed on my iPad. That is true. It's like there is an options paralysis thing that happens for yeah. me where it's like, I don't know why everything looks the same. Whereas in the movie theater, you have eight, ten options and you have to pick out of those eight, ten options. And it's an experience and there's popcorn. Smaller and- menu. <laughs> it's like, have y'all tried streaming before? <laughs> That's your fucking tiring, dude. Really? You got to perform yeah. like a clown for 14 hours. Oh, oh live my streaming. God. Hey, let me tell you something. I talked to these kids. I did live streaming for a little bit, yeah. right? Perform for like two hours. I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> I was so tired. And these guys were like, hey, when you going to do it again? You going to do it later tonight? <laughs> Go 
get a job, bitch. I'm tired. <laughs> like I was so fucking exhausted. You have no idea how tired I was. I enjoy the fact that I got to connect with fans, but fuck. But the way, maybe the way you connect is like you're very like high intensity, right? You mm. always feel like you have maybe like dead air is not something you feel comfortable well, with. I don't want to watch that shit. But they, <laughs> they kind of just want to watch you just like pick your nose. And I'm yeah. like, but even then being on camera like that bothers me. I just can't do it. And I tried it. People enjoyed it. It was fine. But I saw, and I, you know, the great thing about that community, I could ask them questions about something I don't know about. I was like, hey, on average, how often do Twitch streamers stream or YouTube streamers? They go about six hours a day. Yeah. Oh my God. How six hours? Insane. It's because they want their fans want to be part of their lives. Yeah. It's like social media, but live. You know what I mean? Like, and they're, you're inviting them into your life and knowing who you are as a person and not how like other people are presenting you. I am so excited about Quince, our new sponsor. I've never been more excited about a sponsor because they have affordable cashmere, right. right? Which I always want more cashmere. I never know where to get it. Now I know Quince is where I'm going. I got the cutest little black cardigan. It shows the baby bump. I'm going to wear it on the show next week probably. I got these cashmere socks. Okay, you guys. I didn't know cashmere socks existed. I'm going to buy a thousand more when I get home today. They're so cozy, comfortable. You guys, we love Quince. Um, it is affordable, luxury. Quince offers a range of high quality items at prices within reach, like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters from $50 washable silk tops and dresses, organic cotton sweaters, and 14 karat gold jewelry. The best part, all of Quint's items are priced 50 to 80 percent less than similar brands. This is not a joke. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. Give yourself the luxury you deserve with Quince. Go to quince.com slash trash for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash trash to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash trash. I'm not kidding you, Kalila. You need the cashmere socks and you need the cashmere cardigan. I'm it's on it. It's so cute. Valentine's Day is right around the corner and it's no secret that consuming a little THC can help set the mood in the bedroom. This is literally how I got pregnant. However, getting that right strain and dosage can be difficult. That's why we are thankful for today's sponsor, Vaya, who I'm going to be loading up on for after the baby comes. Vaya has developed a unique blend of pleasure enhancing cannabinoids, libido strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. We're talking about pairing aphrodisiac herbs with a mild amount of THC. Their best-selling High Love gummy will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. Now, Kyle, you tried it, which I know you don't need this, but it must have been really crazy. I was high in love, baby. And their products have great flavor and are made with vegan and organic ingredients. Vaya is the only lifestyle hemp brand offering a craft cannabis experience. They use compounds found in hemp along with active plant extracts to create products each with a specific effect in mind. Whether you want to get better sleep, ease anxiety, enhance your mood, or just get high, they have something for you. And if you're not into THC, they also have zero THC options. Their products range from two milligrams to 50 milligrams of THC. So these guys have you covered. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to viahemp.com and use code TRASH TUESDAY to receive 15% off and one free sample of their Sleepy Dreams gummies, 21 and up. That's V-I-I-A hemp. Dot com and use code trash tuesday at checkout take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from via hem dude when periscope was alive and popping <gasps> oh, you were a periscope yeah. princess i was live streaming all day every day but the really? but you know what got me into it was that I became a fan of it first. So I had a few mm -hmm. live streamers that I was obsessed with. Every time they went live, I was so excited and entertained by it that I was like, oh, I kind of get this now. And then I started doing it. And then when the app like went away, it was just kind of like, all right, forget this. What I'll did you like about watching them? It's just like so exciting that someone, if you, if you like someone's personality and they're like your, they become your friend mm. and then you get to hang out with them like on demand or whatever yeah. and watch the replays. And I don't know. It's like, 
it's just an escape from my what's boring about my life. It's see how so they fun. deal with things. See how they eat pizza. See how they pick their nose. They'll like update you on like their relationship situations, or they'll just be like, "Okay, so today I'm organizing this." Like, you know what? It is the generation of oversharing right now. People be sharing their trauma like nothing else. Trauma dumping. Hey, can I tell you something? I love therapy but i hate people who take therapy <laughs> if you do you understand what i meant yeah. it's like some people take a one therapy session and they try to therapize you after mm. it's like <laughs> hey bitch, chill go take a few more sessions mm. that's a conversation between you and your therapist no like they'll literally like jonah hill right he weaponized yeah. therapy i'm like listen that's a conversation between you and your therapist you guys have this thing you don't take that and try to therapize me Right? That's your life. That's your story. Keep it here. I'm yeah. at fault for definitely oversharing What's wrong for with a you, decade. Girl? No, but it's apparently a trauma response and it's to keep people at a distance. Wait, how? Like, I'm going to give you my deepest, darkest, or what I think is disposable um, information about me. And I'm telling it to you in a very intellectualized way. I'm not really showing you how I feel about it. So it's like, it's actually keeping you at a an arm's length. Bobby does the same. He will tell you the color of his asshole, yeah. the color of his rectum. He'll tell you how, you know, a family member did this, all of these. And I do the same thing. And I think it's because I'm telling you, I'm not showing you how I feel. And it's just a way of keeping you away so you don't ask me anything. The moment somebody I, comes up to me and they go, do you know what my therapist told me about that? I'm like, ah, get shut up. Get away from me, all right? I got my own therapist, all right? We talk it all out. I don't need you, all right? You didn't even take a shower today. Your breath stinks. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> David, on the subject of oversharing and people needing you to therapize them, we have a great segment that we oh, love to get into. <laughs> well, let me You're our therapist. Banana. Here we go. <laughs> Load up on your potassium. A lot of people your advice and sort of your perspective. I feel like you are a real girl's guy friend. So we have a new segment. You're a real girl's girl, David. We okay. called David, so you're in a situationship. And then we had the slugs reach out for advice for oh, you. Oh, here we go. So question one. I dated guy, a guy? I dated a guy from September to October. We kept seeing each other and in December we had this emotional night where we both cried. I thought we were dating exclusively after that based on context and feelings. But Done a week ago already. he said we're sneaky links or secretly hooking up. I ended things but I feel attached and can't logically talk myself out of letting it go. How do I do that? Number one, dude said sneak links. He's whack. What the <laughs> says that? That's embarrassing as shit. Did your pussy dry up after he said that? <laughs> the f are you out of your mind? You know what we are? We're sneak leaks. <laughs> hey, get the f out of my apartment, dweeb. <laughs> Let's start with that sh dude. Girl, you could do so much fucking better. But one thing you could improve on, by the way, is communication. You can't just assume shit with the guy you just met. You don't know him. No, There is nothing that should keep you attached to somebody you just met. That was one month. I've been with my wife for 10 years, and I just started giving her compliments. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Set your expectations right, dude. You're young. You're fine. But you you think that maybe because they have this like emotional, like mutual crying what session. What was that? I want to know more about that. But hey, we just talked about that. People do that with people on Twitch, all right? <laughs> all right? What you talking about? Oh, you cried in front of somebody? Guess what? I cried in front of a cash register yesterday, cashier yesterday. We're not connected. It's all good. I just had a sad thought. I started tearing up. Whatever. So are we going to fucking f now? That means nothing. It really, you're right. It means nothing. You carry your heart on your sleeve too much. You got to guard yourself a little bit. Feel things out, man. It's okay. And by the way, this is, this is going to happen to you multiple times. Relationships, especially when you don't have something committed, it's the wild west. You don't know what's going to yeah. happen. I think sometimes people do that. They fucking, they love fuck each other. They love bomb each other too fast. That might be a you issue. That is sounding like love bombing. Like one thing I, it's coming up for me is I don't think I love it when both people are crying at the same time. That feels big and like dramatic. I think like if I'm crying, you should not be crying. Esther, I could not agree with you more. You are absolutely correct. And I'll tell you why. When someone is crying in front of me, I am, I need to sit there and hold space for them yeah. and listen and allow them to have their emotional moment. I'm not going to, because my mom used to do this where it's like my sister would cry and then she'd be like, whoa, and then she would cry. And I'm like, you are literally not giving her her moment to grieve or to do whatever. And now my sister is taking care of my crying mom. So at a funeral, you just punk people to stop crying when you're crying? No, I mean, there <laughs> we can collectively bitch, stop, cry. It's my turn. 
We could collectively cry at a funeral. There are places where we could, you know, group cry. But I think I, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, and that doesn't mean that a man can't cry. Like, I yeah, 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 fully yeah, yeah. support that. But mm-hmm. when he's crying, I want to not be crying too. Well, I can get teary-eyed if you're, it's what you're telling me is really, like, moving me. Yeah. But to then cry as hard with you... Or maybe, I don't know. Maybe One person's got to stay strong when the crying is happening. <laughs> yeah, can, take your turn. Take turns. Yeah. Take turns. I don't think I've ever had equal sorrow at the same time with somebody. Yeah. I don't know if that's natural either, right? Usually some person, one person processes and the other person cries. Well, I think one person has to be on survival mode to take yeah. care of the person in distress. When 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 right? you and Bobby split, right? Mm-hmm. Did, you, did you guys have a serious conversation where it was like, hey, and then both, did you guys cry at the same time or did were you just like, hey, this is, we, we're done. Here. So in therapy, we were in therapy for two years before we decided that, okay, this is not like working, right? And in those therapy sessions, we would take take turns crying but when we ever like collect and, and, and when he would talk about me in a way that would that really like moved me he would say things like Kalila is this to me I would be in tears and when I would say things about him he would be in tears the only time we did cry together is when we finally you know I I was in bed and he had just come upstairs and I know that he had had he had just had therapy and I already knew what the conversation was going to be and then Basically, what I said is like, should we like just be brave and see what's on the other side of this? Ooh. And he was I like, hate this. Ooh, I don't want to so hear that. I don't want to know about. And this. he was like, yeah, I think we should be brave. And then we cried together, and then said, it's okay, sweetie. Like we both tried. We tried like our best. And then we went to a Korean spa. We went to a wee spa. And they're like, let's live together for another two years after this. <laughs> <laughs> And continue to be in business together. <laughs> let's never let's, leave let's, each other's side let's, let's ever. Let's the same bed and hold hands. <laughs> oh my God. But it was really sad. And there was a moment of like, yeah, but I guess now, mutual. That's after 10 plus years. This is two months and they're both crying on an emotional night. That is my red flag here. Oh uh, yeah. She might, she might be the weirdo in this case because I mean, he's probably a weirdo too. It always but, takes two. Yeah, it yeah, always yeah, takes yeah. two. And one is leading one on. Like I, it, I think sing sneak links. Yeah, dude, he, that's pussy she's, dried up, dude. Yeah. I don't even got a p- that's just dry. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> sneak links. Get the p- out of here. Question two. Was talking to the guy I'm seeing about what it means to be a 10. I've never had anyone tell me I'm not a 10. I asked him what he thought. Oh, this is horrible. And he said eight and a half. All my girlfriends oh my are like, ew, f- him and my guy friends are like why did you even ask that should i keep hooking up with him or is that a deal breaker you ain't a 10 (laughs) nobody's a 10 girl nobody on this earth is a 10 hey let me actually tell you this so there was a study done that buddy told me about right it was they they basically interviewed a bunch of young men and young women so the the question was if you had somebody that was 80 percent of everything that you liked and 20 percent of the things that you dislike is that good or bad So the result was men said, yes, that's amazing. Majority of women said, no, I would be settling for less. Really? 80, They're delusional. Those women are delusional. Right? You, you're this, nev- you're not like getting 60. 100%. Yeah. So this is that thing, right? Nobody is a 10. You could feel like you're a 10, but nobody else has to agree with that, right? It's that same concept too. When I see some of the wackest people online, they're like, oh, I'm bad as f-. Yeah, to you, gargoyle, but not to everybody <laughs> else. It's fine if you think that. That's all good. I'm sorry. If 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 my partner tells, I I would be like, what the? F-? Just say it. Yeah, he, say that's it. rude. Just that's say rude. it. It takes no time, no effort, and it's gonna like it's going to avoid but a discussion and a read fight. Read this first sentence. Was talking to the guy that I'm seeing. So what is the level of commitment here? Hmm. I don't know. If you if a guy is hitting it, just say ten. Just shut what up and say it ten. Sound- I did a poll. All the girls said what you said, and all the men said what David said. So that's why I wanted to bring it. Oh, up. Oh really? Wait. All the girls said, that guy never talked to him again. Like, but that, I have also, to say 10. You can't ask to be rated. No. And also, if you're coming into this, like, not to be a hater, but if you're coming into this, like, every guy thinks I'm a 10, the guy is like, he's gonna be like, gross. No, I, I that would turn me off if some guy My was. My wife ain't a 10. I love her. <laughs> I fucking love her, and I don't want her to be a 10. I don't want that 10 bullshit. Can I want- you call Dave right now and ask him to rate you? Yeah. <gasps> yeah, oh, see, no, great. that's- Oh, I like that. Even though I was the first one to say you should never ask, but sure. <laughs> also, I think David should call his wife and, and because, his rating. Can I tell you why? Oh, I'm it's a negative because, I think it's because 10 guys have different definitions of what a 10 is. Yeah, everybody yeah. does. Yeah. 
Dave? Yeah. Hi. It's me. Um, I'm, (laughs) I'm being held hostage. No, I have a question. What is going on? (laughs) What would you rate me from one to 10? 10? Are you kidding? Absolute 10. Oh my God. But I do want to say it's inappropriate of me to ask that. (laughs) And I'm sorry. Sticking to that. And I apologize, but thank you. Yeah, I've never been a fan of the one to ten. Yeah, it's gross. Sentiment. It's gross. Yeah, I Are agree. Are you kidding me? Absolute ten. Oh, Dave, I love you. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, let me. You should, should I call Bobby? You should call Bobby. <laughs> Bye. He's not gonna pick up. He's still sleeping, guys. It's only four p.m. <laughs> But Dave and I are very anti, like, number system. Oh, I'm in a nail appointment. What's up? Are you getting your nails done? Yeah, yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah? Oh, what color are you getting? I don't know. Why, like, why, like a white. Oh, uh, your toenails or your hands? Both. Oh, okay. Um, I have a question. What would you rate me from 1 to 10? A 10. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. That's all I uh, wanted. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Great. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I think that answers the question. Yeah. What? Is like it- you're asking a guy you barely know to rate you. Like you're asking your fiance. Also, yeah. too, girls are very good at gassing each other up, so they'll always call the home. This is like y'all ever notice how like guys go out? Let's say it's a guy's night out, right, fellas? We're all going out, right? We don't ever look at each other like, boy, the fucking white sweater be f-ing killing. Oh, where, where do you get that head? Oh, you see, my head would look better on you, right? Girls, when they go out, f-ing, where you get that necklace? Oh my God, are you serious? Your hair? I was going to do that, but I did it. It looks better on you than it would me. <laughs> that's how so y'all real. talk. Y'all gas each other up Wait, so nice. fucking well. Well, that's what I'm saying. Don't expect that from a guy. Because a guy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a guy will see a, a, a dope shirt. It's like, oh, where'd you, where'd you cop that? <laughs> and then they go out. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is how like guys communicate. But that's what I'm saying. Don't you think that in the courting stages, if you say anything less than 10, you're, you're f***ing up This would be an immediate turnoff for me though. If somebody asked me to rate them. Okay, I agree. That's what I'm saying. There's only also- like a few women I've ever seen in my life in person where I was like, dude, are you like AI created? Like you're fucking yeah. gorgeous, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, whatever though. You know Being what I mean? a 10 is pointless. Like, yeah, it's like AI created and it's something that you just, you remember seeing once. Like no one wants to really date that. that I will say anything above an eight, I'm out. Like who wants anything above an eight anyways? A lot of people want it, you know? <laughs> Everybody wants it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody wants it. Let's be fucking real. Or am I just, do but, I just know I can't uh, get above an eight? So uh, like, I'm just. Well, it's because, well, I saw pictures of your past, so I understand. Like, it makes sense. <laughs> You're actually not going to anybody. It's like, right, I get it. You know, you want to meet people where you were before. You know what I'm saying? You were a solid two and a half. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this girl. He's not lying. This girl had an eye and this way, another you. eye this way. I swear no one believes me when I say that I wasn't the cutest girl growing up and I went through a very fucked up awkward stage and he is not lying. Yeah, she's And when real. people like when really hot chicks are like, you know, I was once an ugly duckling and you look at their old pictures and you're like, they were hot. you've been hot since this the day one? you were born. Crazy, dude. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Crazy, me. Crazy, I, I needed time to cook. That's had to take why a couple cool. of shots before you kiss this one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but that's why you're cool. If you were always pretty, you wouldn't be cool. I needed like 30-something years to cook. Dude, I, I, I tell you this, right? We just had a conversation with a couple of guy friends about this where it was like, I wonder what it's like for as a guy. When you see I, like hot dudes, right? They are the lamest motherfuckers you've ever met in your life. Cause, and I understand because it makes sense. Why develop this thing that you don't have to develop? Everything's just given to you. Same thing with hot girls, right? They don't have to develop the personality having to, you don't have to like giggle your way into a You just stand there and then people walk up to you. I've seen this happen to a friend of mine, but he's like a really like chase demure guy, right? <laughs> I don't like the way you did this. Yeah. So like women will come up to him I'm like, oh, what are you doing? And he would just say, he'd be like nothing and they would laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting here like a fucking troglodyte just looking at him like, what is this? How do you do this? He goes, I don't know. These f-ing girls just keep coming up to me. And he's asking me to scare them away like I'm a bulldog, right? <laughs> Which is very easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just go, hi, my name is David. <laughs> they just fucking walk away. But it's very interesting to see these people work, right? But I will say this, though. 
the people that you always end up with later in life, they're never the hottest fucking people. It's the people you enjoy being around. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying hot people don't have good personalities or whatever, but you didn't have to go through trials and tribulations to figure out how to talk to somebody to develop good conversations. But don't you think that is in itself like sort of this um, affliction to be that good looking that, that the sucks. moment you open your mouth, you can only move downwards. Like you are already at like peak physical shape, right? And then now you can only really go down from there. Well, yeah, it's like also too, it's like, I mean, I think we should all try our best to look our best, right? But then you see people start hitting the age of 40, maybe even early 30s. They start getting shit done constantly over and over. And I'm, I'm saying, you know, put your lotions on, do whatever you want to get Botox, whatever, right? But the hard part about that is like you're investing in something that has no return. It just keeps going down and down. That stock will never go up, right? You just, you predicated yourself on this one thing that just will not stay around, which is your looks. And it yes. sucks because every day you have to look at your face and you have to watch yourself age. Then you look at younger girls on Instagram. You see the attention that you used to get and then you start to hate yourself. Then you change more things about yourself and it's the saddest thing ever. My mom, when she hit her, when she hit like 60, she asked me, she goes, if I got like, face stuff done would you like it i was like you do whatever you want but that's not the face that i grew up with and that's not the reason why dad loves you that's the reason why i love you why your son loves you i don't ever want you to change the stuff that i care about but that's still what you got to do and she's never done it since like she just hasn't even brought up that question again because like i just find it so stupid to just hold on to something that will never last it will never fucking last. When you die, when you're with somebody, let's say you and Dave are together, do you think he's going to look back and say, oh, I remember when you were the youngest, blah, 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 blah. He's going to look back at all the times you guys laughed together, shared a meal, all these other things. That stuff is fleeting. Who the f*** cares, you know? Yeah, but it is really a difficult um, thing to be an aging girl. I will say that. Like, I can intellectualize it all I want and say I don't want to predicate my existence on, you know, my looks alone. Like, I did get a lot of attention in my 20s and in my 30s, right? Um, but even though I know what you're saying is correct, inherently, that's what I want to feel. Like, I want to feel that. Um, it is hard to live by that. It's yeah. It's a very tricky subject because even though you are speaking on it with such, like, kindness and warmth and in such a positive way it's hard because this topic is so often weaponized against women by men and you're not doing that at all you're doing the opposite but like it's so often where men are like she's hit her wall or her looks once her looks go they really hold on to that as like this weapon that they have and against then us. the other way around when you do get work done and you're like look at all the work she's done she's so desperate but to look I younger you so it's like a lose-lose like? lose. don't they look like this <laughs> <laughs> don't the guys judging you look like literally yes, yes. a I little mean, bit like this <laughs> to be fair the men in our lives are are not those guys. No. And no. Would we would never keep people around. But look at the people no. who like throw stones at you. Yeah. Yes, garbage. That's amazing. Look at the dudes that cat calls these women, right? Oh, what's up? I can't wait to f that. Bitch, you wouldn't know what to do with that ass. You would <laughs> never know. You would not. Like, I remember I would ogle women when I was younger. And like, what would you do? She'd come up to you, ha, ha run away. Because there's no way. There's no f way, right? So you also have to look at the audience who says those type of things about I you. I love that. Right? Look at the audience. There's no f way any of those dudes would come up to your face and say that shit to your face. They're all p they would never do that. Well, look at their personal relationship. Look at the people that they're with. I've seen guys who say that online. You click their profile, their women look like garbage. The f are you talking about? Yeah. I who think, are you barking at? I think that what you're saying is correct. Like, I'll give you a perfect example. Like, there was, like, some uh, Tiger Belly clip was posted. And the most, like, benign comment ever, which is, like, wow, Kalila is, like, really aging rapidly, right? Yeah. And... The truth Rapidly. is, like, what like <laughs> but there's truth to the fact that, of course, I'm aging. I'm going to be 40. But that little thing hurt me so bad, even though it was true and even though I don't rely on my looks for, um, in theory, it's all wonderful. But to practice it and to really not be affected by what people say is really yeah, hard. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. Like, like I said, everything is harder in practice, right? Yeah. But if you kind of take a step back and you look at everything, right? Like, am I on this podcast because I want to f*** you too? Or am I on this podcast because I enjoy <laughs> your company, right? That's young people talk. Yeah. 
that's there's stages in life. There's a time for that type of shit. Young people will say that shit. Scummy people will always say that shit. But you have to look at your interpersonal relationships and the people that you're around on the daily to kind of judge how you feel about yourself to a certain extent, right? Like I get it. Aging fucking sucks. I don't like it. My knees be popping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't like that shit. You okay? I don't like it when I walk at a park, I now put my hands behind my back like this. Old Korean man Old walk. Korean man shit. Yeah. I don't like it. I accept it though, right? Because as we age, as corny as this fucking sounds, things get a little bit better. They because do. Because you're a little wiser, you're a little smarter. And I never look back at my youth and I say, I wish I was that age again. I have never- That is ever... so true. Yeah. I don't, I don't look at old pictures and I'm like, God, I- You're I've... out here fucking sucking dick for change. You want to do that shit again? Huh? <laughs> I don't. Don't, exactly. make me, don't make me do it, daddy. You found the <laughs> ugliest person in the room and you're like, that's the penis I want. You want to be that Kalila again? I did it again? so well to completion. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You don't want to Because they gave that. me a gold star sticker and they said good job little immigrant girl well, this is what i'm saying right if you go back i can i don't want to change that shit i like who i am now and all this other shit that happened in my past is what makes me who i am now and it just is what it is we're all gonna fucking die i don't think people really understand that concept <laughs> in the defense die. of kalila though i understand that mental i remember my aunt once said to me you will remember the day when you aren't like goggled by a guy, like when you're walking Ugh, past. I hate, that's so depressing. Sorry. Why should? Why would she say that to you? Because she's a but, psycho. But, but also, I, by the way, like I, I'm relieved to know that the grow, the, the highest number of STDs are in nursing homes. <laughs> and so Smash if it. those women are getting ogled and they're smashing, like I'm good. Also, when I look at these TikToks of when they, you see like um, couples that were together when they were teenagers in the seventies and who they are now, I love seeing different versions of them. So I think you're right. Like, I don't want to see the same version of my partner forever. No, you do not. Like I want to see them change and grow and grow a beard and see their first salt and pepper. You yeah. know, the white strands come in their hair. That is really like cool. Also, as someone who literally studies hotness online, um, <laughs> I will say that it really all does come down to how do you feel? Yeah. How do you feel? And once you really can internalize that, like the worries are gone because you can f do anything to feel, you know, for me, it's like if I go to Pilates, I feel my best age, my best everything, like that makes me feel good. And so I, that's been my focus because there was phases where I'd like look at pictures of me from, you know, five, 10 years ago and be like, oh, I look different. Now I just don't look and I just focus on how I feel. I, I yeah, I mean, like, look, I think that's like the best, right? And look, I, you could go back in old photos. It's, it's just going to keep happening. Over yeah. Over. Like, what are you trying to change? You're trying to fight time? What, what the f*** is that? Right. You, do you want to lose every time? <laughs> like, I don't want to lose. Look, I'm not going to fight it. Like I said, once people become very aware that you're going to die, you'll start getting rid of the shit that doesn't f***ing matter anymore. I have a very limited time on this earth, and I'm going to be as happy as possible. I don't f***ing care. I really don't f***ing care. Whatever happens here or not, I'm going to choose to be happy and try to be the best person that I can be. And if I am in the way of my own happiness, I'm going to get that shit out of here. I don't want to look back at the stuff I didn't have all that shit. Comparison is the thief of joy. How many times have we fucking heard that shit? That shit is true. It happens in the comment section. It happens in your life. If you look back in your stuff and you go, oh, I used to be so beautiful. Who the f cares? That was a good time. Cherish it. It's great. Now you're in a new stage. You'll figure it all out. Cherish it. Make sure you profit it off of it. Move on. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think it's it sucks for a girl, though. Like, I, I do see it a lot, specifically in the comments, because guys sometimes can be so fucking back and forth with their bullshit, right? Yeah. Oh, I like a girl with fucking no makeup on. No, you fucked <laughs> Don't say that. You don't want to roll over. You see the drill stand out. Of <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't say that shit. Mm. Don't be dishonest with that type of stuff. Like, there's no point in saying that thing, those things, right? And it kind of sets women up for disappointment because you tell them that they look good this way. And when they don't, you start saying all this other shit. F all that stuff. That's why I say don't even look at that type of stuff. I feel like today we're so philosophical. I love it. I know. Okay, so the next segment, it, we're going to, they're just like quickies. Okay. I can feel him pulling away, texting-wise mainly. Do I bring it up or just stop messaging? Do not bring it up. Just match his energy. Match it. That's right. Yeah. That's a good girly. Match his energy. Give him what he gives you. That's very Tinks. Which, by the way, Tinks does want to come on the show. We have oh, to I love her, her. I know. Do you know what Texting etiquette is weird, right? Yeah. That's the hard part. Not everybody's good at texting. Oh, come on. No, listen. I know some of my homegirls. I love them to death. I 
fucking hate texting them. They're the <laughs> worst texters on earth. Some people just aren't really good at it. But that's homegirl stuff. If you're interested in somebody. Yeah, but it's always going to be the best in the beginning. That's how it always mm -hmm. is. And once you get comfortable, I'm not saying that it's right, but it's going to happen. Not everything's going to be new and exciting, right? And after a while, it's just a couple of words here and there. I think what matters the most is like the interpersonal interaction. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if... if if this is happening, he's pulling away via text, but he's still making plans. You guys are yeah, still don't bring having it up, fun. Don't, don't bring it up. No, I definitely agree. don't bring it up. Then I think it's okay. But yes, no matter what, don't bring it up. Yeah. You'll don't. just, I know you want to. I've been there, but just don't. Yeah, Trust match me. the energy or just don't even think about it. I don't even do the match the energy stuff. I text how I want to text. That's not how it is. That's just is what it is. Yeah, but I feel like if it's very early in the relationship and the effort is already waning when it was here and now it's here, like I'm going to read into that no matter what. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm going to be like, oh, this is information that um, he is giving me and I'm going to act accordingly. And I'm going to go have sex with your friend. Ooh, that's tight. Okay. Can they watch though? <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two. Asked to be just friends, but now wants to hang constantly. No hooking up. Why? Wait, what do you mean? So they just asked to be, they used to hook up, but now ask, they're asking to just be friends and now wants to hang out consistently as friends. No hooking you're bad up. In bed. Why? Ooh. <laughs> probably. You probably suck at I'm dude. confused. Who asked? Okay, he so the, the, I, th I think these two people were together. The guy was like, I just, I just want to be friends, but now he's constantly hitting her up, wanting to hang out. Like as friends? As friends. Like without. But she doesn't out. feel the same? No. That is weird. Maybe she's really cool. Who asked you? This friends? is a question for you because this is this is you right here, right? Hmm. Asked to be just friends. <laughs> yeah, but like Bobby is not my friend. Like we are so like entrenched in a very like family type way. Like mm. I wish we were just friends. They could be like, bye. But it's n no, we do really like hanging out together though. That is a good point, David. I mean, you're this making. doesn't even seem like a problem though. Yeah. How about you be an adult and just set I boundaries? She, I think she probably wants still it. has feelings oh yeah. then you can't be friends then Stella, yeah. is this you you're like talking about it really <laughs> specific <laughs> no, I know everything. no i just i there are a lot of very long ones so i had to kind of simplify Ooh, number take. three i okay. should i date a girl that's 31 i'm 19 she's super nice but i'm unsure is that weird uh, let Wait, me say what? one thing they're both women too I oh. Oh, oh very different hot i love me oh wait yeah, no, that's like a 12 year. I love a 10, I, I love mean, a decade. It's legal. Like it's, about, I guess it's legal. Me and Dave are 10 years apart. Yes, it was a very hard first five years for him dating someone so young and stupid, but I love I love an age gap. What, uh, what, how old were you when you started dating? Tw I was 24. So I was a psycho till I was like 30. I think 30. that's a little different than 19 though. Very different. I mean, that's 24. that five year gap from 19 yeah. to 24 is very different. As someone who was a teenager that was constantly um, preyed on by men either in their 40s or upper 30s. At that time when I was that age, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. I thought I was being like the super cool girl who could just be mature enough to hang with these older guys. When I got older, I was so icked out by it. I'm like, these dudes could not pull from their own pool. So they go um, younger? Women. So they go down to the most naive girl yeah. who thinks that the reason he's choosing her he's is because cool. she's mature enough. Ooh, A. A. You know? I hate that shit. I hate it when girls do that. Young girls, I f***ing so mature for my age. Bitch, no, you not. I was that. Oh, no, God. it's because the guy- And it was validated by the fact that these older guys would be like, wow, you're very mature. Like, here, have a drink. It's because like, they're losers and they, the women their age know they're losers. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Except for Dave. I don't mean that. I pursued him, so it's my fault. I wonder, like, what you find in common with the 19-year-old, though. Like, they just finished their SATs. Like, what are you guys going to talk about? <laughs> yeah, like, that what's sounds the... boring. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the conversation you're going to have with a 19-year-old? I don't understand. Like, even when I went to, I would do these college shows, right? So I started out when I was, like, 25. So these kids, these, they weren't kids. We were around the same age, like 22, 21, 25, 24. So it's fine. Once I started getting older, it was like, eh, like, we have nothing to talk about here. And I feel that you start getting to an age of, like, mental mentorship now like you start yeah. talking to them like you're older and now you mentor them versus having a, a conversation on equal ground. you're not equals we're yeah. not equals okay i have a question for you guys how do i address a family member who's a woman in her 40s who constantly seeks dudes that are 19 20 sometimes younger like i truly think that she's a pedophile <laughs> but like she's barely she's getting them right at legal so like i can't say anything but i'm like dude like what what the f is wrong is with you? Is it any of your business? Do you just have to leave it? I you know, 
There was this case where there was a school teacher who was hooking up with a young student. Right? Mary Kay Latorno. I don't remember the name, but that's very interesting. And Billy. You're very okay. All right, you be studying, huh? All right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, know. <laughs> I know them. Wait, there's a oh. movie about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like, May December. Okay, maybe there's multiple stuff. I don't. I don't <laughs> be doing this on my spare time like that, like y'all. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying, y'all freaks. But I. You don't I, investigate crimes. Well, like at first I was like enraged, like not enraged, right? But I'm like, oh, that's still a little weird. And then I thought, man, would a young David So want to be? finagled by this older <laughs> woman and I do feel and it feels terrible saying this but for a guy it's always different because it's that imminent danger right guys don't feel scared when a woman does that yeah. even though it's wrong mm. right and I always look at that situation I think about myself in high school with this teacher named Miss Oda if Miss Oda was like show me your dick psh, that shit would have been out you know <laughs> instantly no questions <laughs> told all my friends about it yo Miss Oda f me yeah but it's a safety issue right because yeah, it's like a safety issue, because right? I do um the um, the guy that I'm seeing now, when he was 19, he was in a relationship with a woman who was like in well into her 30s. And I was like, did it feel wrong? Yeah. Um, were you ever, he was like, no, like physically, like I, oh, I was so much bigger than, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, there was yeah, no yeah, yeah. sense of danger right. to my person, like at any point. And he was like, she bought me a car. Like she was like, really just. She bought him a car? Yeah. And so I was like, oh, like. Well, as he was in control then. I was like, okay, because if I was in his position, I would be terrified if I yeah. was a young teenager. Yeah. But you don't know. That's it. Like our brains don't fully develop till 25. I say 30 even. It's like just because there's not physical danger doesn't mean there's not this like huge like mental, mental yeah, 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 yeah. like I unfairness. Agree. It is weird. I feel bad that I initially was like, hell yeah, but you guys are right. 19 is just you're the person who wrote this, young. you're disgustingly young. It is weird too also that the woman is older. Like I love it when young men date older women. And so I'm like, yes, get it. But like it's it contradicts the fact that it would be really creepy if it were the other way around. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah. and I'm product of a 36 year age gap. You know, like imagine like my dad was this fully formed 36 year old man and my mom was just sliding out of my grandma's vagina is a really disturbing mm. thing for me. Like I've had, a, it took me a long time to reconcile with that because I saw my dad as a really stand up individual. But as, he didn't meet your mom when she was zero. N <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> but he still met her when they made me when he was in his 60s and she was what, 22, Esther? Oh, like, that's a big age gap. It's like 36, right? So, but then it's so. I hate the feeling of thinking that I truly believe my dad was a really great man. And I truly think my mom like loved him and they stayed together till the day he died. And she took really good care of him. He took really good care of her. So I feel very confused and conflicted about age gaps because I'm like, well, ugh, grossly it worked. And I hate that I'm a product of that, but also thank you for my life. Thank you for being predatory interesting that's that is, a huge eight, 30 38 year difference 36 36 year that yeah, is damn. really complicated yeah that's really complicated and interesting and fascinating and it's just interesting that you it bothers you but you also like need to kind of like it like love or appreciate it in some way because it is your parents and it's who you are and they were my dad was great like yeah. legit, like very honorable even. It's your dad. You love yeah. him. Hey man, he also bagged a 22 year old at 60, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's my hero. <laughs> yeah, all right. Kalana, have you watched May, December? I did, yes. What'd you think? Um, well, so I followed the Mary Kay Letourneau thing like pretty closely before. Um, I loved it. I, it's super uncomfortable because then like when Villy finally comes around and says like, which happened in real life, right? Like where he confronts um, Mary Kay Latorno and says like, hey, like, should we talk about the fact that like I was this young? And she was like, who's the boss? Who's the boss? Have you seen that scene? I haven't finished it. No. She said this in an interview and she was almost like brainwashing him in that moment to being like, who came on to me? Who's the boss? Ooh. And he, he was 13. Oh, this is a really young boy. Oh. Yeah, 13. Oh, yeah, 13 yeah, yeah. is crazy. He ah. was, she was his teacher. And they- Hot teacher though, very pretty. Yeah, they, you know, did the thing and then she went to jail and then they ended up, she, didn't she give she birth? She got pregnant in jail, in, in prison. Jail. 
this bitch crazy. Yeah. yeah. And I you mean, know what? She comes from a very political family. Her father ran for president. What? Like in the 60s or something like that. She comes from a big, very conservative Republican family. And she was by her brothers allegedly when she was young. And I think that had to do with the fact that she was not, she now, you know, she proceeded to prey Whoa. on a 13 year old oh, student. That's really sad. I was thinking like an 18 year old boy, 13? Yeah. They just, just hit puberty. That's oh. crazy. And they have like kids together. So they it's have, like, really three kids interesting there, to yeah. watch him as a father. It's an interesting movie. You should watch it. Okay, maybe wow. I gotta watch that one. You need to watch it. <laughs> maybe I gotta watch Spank it. Bank. Yeah, um. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> maybe I should watch that one as I put it on my pants. <laughs> you guys, I'm so sad we're out of time, but David, thank you so much for coming today. No problem. And like we could we got real deep and weird and disagreed. I loved it. Where should people come find you? What are all your amazing podcasts? Uh Genius Brain Podcast. We also have, uh, oh damn, I forgot the MMA podcast name. <laughs> you always do. I know. It's not we out here. It is the casuals. That's what it is. Genius Brain, <laughs> Genius Brain Podcast, the casuals. Uh, you could check out the uh, my, my store in Hawaii and all, all across the nation, but Jumbi. Uh, if you're in Waikiki area, go ahead and check that out. Also, we have stores out in Jersey. We have it in Texas. We have uh, – in uh, Portland, just all over the fucking place. I say this is right up your alley. Oh my god, Jinbi Matcha is so legit. I need and good. it. I keep forgetting. Oh, well, you can't have that right now. You got baby. But, <laughs> <laughs> but afterwards, we'll, we'll hook that you up. That is so cool. And then Secret Society, S C R T S O C I E T Y dot com. High Fashion Basics, one of my lovely passion projects that I have. But catch me everywhere else. And by the way. Y'all very beautiful as you age. You and say tens. We love you. you huh? Say tens. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> very beautiful as you guys get older. It's a different type of beauty. So yeah. Don't, don't trip, all right? Because I ain't trying to be around f***ing annoying ass women. Y'all are fucking <laughs> fine the way you are. We're good. good. Thank, thank you, you David. Thank you, David. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next week with a brand new episode. And don't forget to get tickets to our live show in LA, February 13th. Tickets at the link below. See you next week. Wow.